So let's start the class with the discussion of that problem. So this was the homework problem that we had taken the other day, homework question. So what was the question? The question was actually that if there is a set having n elements, okay, so there is a set A which has got n elements, that is the cardinal cardinality of the set A is n. And from this set A, if I make two subsets, okay, subset P and subset Q, okay, both are subsets made from the set A. The question was, find the probability, find the probability, find the probability that the intersection of these two sets will be a null set. That is to say that these two sets will not have any element in common between them, right? Okay. So uh, we will start the discussion with a very brief uh, recall, recall of our uh, probability of an event. So probability of an event, everybody would recall this, is nothing but the number of favorable events upon the sample space. Isn't it? So let us focus on sample space first, right? So let us find out the sample space. So tell me if I am making two subsets out of a given set, how many ways can I do it? Remember last class we had done the number of ways to make subsets from or one subset from a given set, right? In fact, we, we had basically taken one set and trying to make subset out of it, right? So there was, that was two to the power n. But if I have to make two set of subsets, then what will I do? Or two pair of subsets, then what will I do? So for, for here, you have to understand, let's say these are your elements of set A. Okay, so these are your elements of set A, A1 to A N. How many options will every element have? Let's say I talk about A1. How many, how many options will A1 have? Now, please understand this. Every element AI, I could be anywhere between 1 to N. This will have, or this has the following options. Ah, uh, no, Aryan, you did not miss anything. We are just discussing the homework question. So the question was, as you can see on your screen, if there is a set A having N elements and I make two pair of subsets out of it, what is the probability that the intersection of these two subsets is a null set? Okay. So I was just taking a scenario over here that if let's say the set A has got A1, A2, A3 till AN elements, how many options does any element AI have? So AI has around four options. What are they? AI could be present in P, right? And at the same time, AI could be present at Q also because you can take that element and it can include that in P and Q, both subsets, right? Asadna, I'm talking about how many ways you can place these elements into these subsets. Okay. So let's see how many possibilities are coming up. Second possibility could be that AI goes to P and doesn't go to Q. Right? Right? Now you tell me what could be a third possibility. It could go to both, correct, Zion? Right? It could go to both P and Q. Okay. Tell me what could be the fourth one? Neither. Absolutely not. Neither. So it could go nowhere also, right? Okay, now- Isn't that the first option? First and third is the same thing? No, no, in the first one- so First and third, you have given same thing. In the first one, it is going to both of them. In the last one, it is going to none of them. First and third. First and third, so first and third. First and third, oh my, I'm so sorry. I missed out on scoring this off. Yeah, sorry about that. So every element now will have four choices each. Four, 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 da, 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 till four, correct. So in short, if I ask you, what would be the sample space in which you can generate these pair of subsets, you say, sir, four into four into four, all the way n times. And that would be nothing but four to the power n. So the denominator, at least I know, it's going to be four to the power n. Is there anybody who is still doubtful about the the denominator of this event. 
or the number of sample space. Do let me know. I'm pausing here for to take up your questions. If none, then we can proceed. Okay. No doubt coming up so far. Well and good. Sure, Raj. I will explain once again. I'll explain once again. No, no, no. I've not started with power set yet. This is probably Are Achha, you didn't read the question where we are and you came in late, right? We have to find the probability, my dear. Right. So what is probability of any event? You have done this in class 9th and 10th, right? Yeah, so probability of an event is the number of favorable events upon the number of sample space, right? Yeah, so that is the speed, not the power set of the event. We haven't even started power set. We're going to do that immediately after this question. Okay. Now, what was my question? Question is, in how many, what is the probability that P intersection Q, P and Q are two subsets formed out of A, so that the intersection is a null set. So what did I do? In order to know what are the total possibilities of such pair of subsets you can create, I decided to see how many options each element will have. Right? So think as if there are two buckets, P and Q, right? And these are, let's say, items kept in the shop, right? So how many options does a particular item have? Number one, it can, it can fall in both the buckets. Okay. Now you must be thinking, sir, how can one item fall in two buckets simultaneously? See, assuming that you're creating independent subsets, right? So that item is again available for selection. So either you can put it in both the buckets or you put it in one and not in the other, right? Or you can put it in the first one, not put it in the first one and put it in the second one, or you can put in neither of the two, right? So this will decide how many options each item or each element of this set have. And then the total number of options that I will have for the entire you know, subsets, the two subsets that has to be created will be the product of four into four into four into four. That will be four to the power n. So the denominator here will be four to the power n. This is what we have discussed so far. Got it, Raj? Okay. The next thing is I want the subsets P and Q to be null set. That means whatever element I'm trying to figure out. Okay. If I want to find out how many ways can I create it? Can I say that element should either fall in one of the two or fall in neither of the two, isn't it? So can I say the first case can happen? No, you will say if this cannot be a favorable event scenario, why it cannot be a favorable event scenario? Because if that element falls in both P and Q, then their intersection will not be the null set, right? Right, their intersection will have that AI element common to both of them. But that is not what we are looking for. Our favorable event is not that. So can second option be an option given to any element? Yes, because if it falls in P and not in Q, their intersection will never have that particular element common. And that's what we actually want. We don't want any common elements to come in both of them. Can it be third option as well? You'll say, yes, sir. It can be third as well because it is falling only in Q, not in P, right? Can it be the fourth as well? Yes, because it is falling in neither of the two. So their intersection will never contain that particular element AI. So in order to calculate the favorable events, you are now giving three, three options each to these elements, isn't it? Yes or no? So yes, so the number of favorable event will be nothing but three into three into three n number of times, and that makes it three to the power n. Very good, Aditya. Okay, so this numerator will become three to the power n. So here goes the answer. The answer to this question is three by four whole to the power n. What is P and Q here, my dear? You're not reading the question here, Aditya Anand. P and Q are subsets to be formed from A. Oh, were you there in the last class when I gave this as a homework question? No, okay, okay. Not to worry. Not to worry. Okay. Anyways, uh, Chris says, I dropped off. Could you please repeat what, what is C to the power n? Yes, C to the power n, Krish, is nothing but the total number of favorable events. Now, how did it become three to the power? And if that is the question, then let me explain this again. Since you want 
since you want since you want a particular no particular element to be present in both the sets yes or no that means you are only allowing the element to be present in either p or q or none of the two because if it present in both then the intersection will have that particular element common to both of them isn't it but that's not what is my purpose my purpose here is to make their intersection as null sets right so under no circumstance any element can follow the first scenario because if it does p intersection q will have that element ai in common and that's de that defeats the purpose of the question isn't it so every element can exercise three options remember every element could exercise four options when you are making a sample space but in the favorable event you are basically restricting every element to exercise only three options because it can't be in both of them it can only be in one of the two or none of the two now makes sense okay thank you no worries so let's move on today our today's agenda is what our today's agenda is power set so we have still not completed our types of sets so i'll now be talking about power set of a set okay so in fact i should write the topic name not as power set in fact i should write it as power set of a set okay power set of a set so what is power set of a set first of all the representation that we use for power set of any set a is p and within the argument we put the uh, you know set name okay whose ever power set we are forming so what is this as the name itself it's a set which contains such elements which are subsets of a so basically what is it it's a set of subsets exactly so in short pa is a set of subsets of a right so all you need to do is just figure out how many subsets are there for a okay and start writing those subsets within curly braces and that would result into power set of a simple as that right let me give you an example a very simple example let's say i have a set which contains 1 2 okay and if i want to write down the power set of a what i will do is okay first of all i'll make the curly braces to represent that i am going to write a set here and within this i'll start putting the elements which are actually the subsets of a so what are the subsets of a let's start writing it within these curly braces so first i will have a null set because as we all know from our previous class null set is the subset of every set then i'll have a set containing just one then i will have a set containing just two and then i'll have the set containing the entire set a okay so this becomes the power set of a this becomes the power set of a is it fine any questions any concerns any questions any concerns easy correct now let us look into let us look into some properties of power set very important properties of power set okay the first property that is very trivial one but you should be remembering it power set of any set cannot be a null set please note power sets are always non empty sets and why is that why is that it is because even if your set a is a null set it will have at least or it will have exactly one subset which is the null set itself so a power set of a null set will contain that null set as an element so it can never be empty it can never be empty it will have a minimum one number of elements for sure okay second thing without any second thought about it is the total number of elements in a power set that is the cardinality of the power set will be what will be what will be what is yes, 2 to the power n right so it will be 2 to the power of number of elements in a correct so if let's say na is the cardinality of a so 2 to the power na will be the cardinality of the power set of it any questions okay third thing which is actually important if power set of a is equal to power set of b okay in fact i should write it as if and only if statement or maybe the one implies the other 
if power set of a is equal to power set of b then it implies and is implied by the fact that a will be equal to b okay so now right to left is very easy to figure out because if two sets are equal even their power sets will be equal so that is a no brainer actually but if i say two two power sets are equal can we prove that that will lead to the fact that even set a and set b will also be equal to each other can anybody prove this or can anybody try proving this on your respective notebooks let me give you around 1 minute to do it by the way many people ask me sir why do you keep proving this because proof will never be asked uh, in the competitive exam see uh, we are not learning for any particular competitive exam my purpose is to you know make you learn for life right so when you prove something when you derive something you basically feel connected with the topic else it becomes very transactional you remember it you forget it after the ut again you remember it for some test again forget it after a few weeks so it doesn't solve the purpose right so let's prove it and if at all you are a pu student by any chance then of course this is going to be you know a possible question for you in your school exams as well okay just try it just try it if you can find a you know a logical proof see by the way when you are proving something when you are saying something is true you cannot prove things by citing example right citing example for something which is true is like verifying it it is not proving it understand this concept okay so proving something cannot be done by citing example but disproving something can be done by citing an example so if you feel that whatever i have written is not correct then you can cite an example and say sir see this is the power set of a power set of b they are equal but a and b are not equal but that that is when you want to disprove the statement which actually you cannot because it's a true statement right so understand this because you're going to apply this in your you know future part of mathematics if you have to prove you have to give a generic proof if you want to disprove you can disprove by citing example okay so what i'll do is i'll prove this way round okay so let's prove one sided so let me prove that if pa is equal to pb then a is equal to b let's try to prove this okay however the the question says it's a bidirectional but i'm not going to prove from right to left because it's very easy proof in fact let's see the the method to prove it so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take a set so let there be a set taken from pa okay i'm calling that set as capital x now remember dear students that set contains a uh, power set contains elements which themselves are sets hence to represent a set i have written it with capital alphabet as you can see here i have kept a capital x over here okay because sets are normally written with capital english alphabets right so what i have done i have taken a particular set capital x okay from the power set of a so what does this mean it means that capital x is a subset of a right and that is why it was present in the power set of a isn't it your capital x would have been a subset of capital a then only it would have got the entry into the power set of a right yes or no pranav makes sense pranav by company does it make sense okay 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 yeah oh you wanted me to wait for you to solve it oh i am so sorry dear so sorry and if you want i can still wait because your solving is more important to me should i wait for some time okay maybe let's say you can take this as a hint and move forward see i'll be more than happy to see the answer coming from your side <laughs> okay you think you got the answer okay so let, let's see whether our uh, process processes are matching or not okay so now let's say there is an arbitrary element x which belongs to this set capital x okay so what i have done i have taken some arbitrary element okay which comes from the set capital x right so now can i say if this arbitrary element has come from the set capital x correct it means this arbitrary element should have been in your set a correct 
because it has come from the subset of a so that element is definitely an element of a also then only it got its entry into the one of the subsets no isn't it now please understand that since p a let me write in mathematical language since p a is equal to p b can i say that capital x will also belong to p b correct yes or no which means capital x is a subset of b as well correct which means that arbitrary element which was belonging to x that will also be a member of b yes or no so this arbitrary element which was a member of x that will also be now a member of b so overall what i have done from 1 and 2 what do i figure out from 1 and 2 what do i figure out i figure out that if an arbitrary element belongs to a then that arbitrary element also belongs to b thereby proving that a is a subset of b yes or no so that is half the job done because if you want a to be equal to b you have to prove two things from it a should be a subset of b which i have just now accomplished and i have to do another half that is b is also a subset of a which i am going to do right now but meanwhile before i proceed before i go any further on i am pausing here i am taking a small small pause and a break to for you to copy down and understand things before i move on done can a power set have subsets why not because at the end of the day it's a set aryan right so you can always create subsets so any set and power set at the end of the day is a set uh omkar has a question so could you explain how exactly a became becomes a subset of b c by very definition of a subset uh, i think you were there in the last class no okay i'll just give you a brief idea if a is a subset of b then it implies that any arbitrary element any arbitrary element x which comes from a will also belong to b right so if you are able to show that if you pick any arbitrary element from a and conclude that that arbitrary element will also belong to b then this leads to the fact that a is a subset of b got it now and that's precisely what happened on car over here so i started with x belonging to a see here and i stumbled upon the fact eventually that x will also belong to b so when this happens a becomes a subset of b so it is trying to say that if you pick any element of a any arbitrary element of a that will end up lying in b as well so a is a subset of b correct any questions any questions so far any question so far can't you just directly to show that the largest element at in p of a and the and p of b are equal largest element in x belongs to p of a and x or uh, cardinal number of x is equal to a and you do the same thing for b and if you show that x is equal to suppose y then doesn't it prove that a equals to b Okay, so when you're trying to say that P A and P B, see this this proof covers that as well, right? This proof covers that as well because it is taking any arbitrary element of that power set. So X is any arbitrary set of that power set A. So your proof is also correct, but it is more like you know a specific one, and mine is a more generic one. I'm not saying your proof is any less you know uh, superior to mine. but what i am trying to cover is i am trying to cover every possible element that is belonging to the power set of a okay that is yes. sound good okay yes sir now how do i prove the other way around b is a subset of a now see again you will have a similar proof you will say let there be a 
एलिमेंट ऑफ पावर सेट ऑफ बी ओके सो लेट वाई बी ओ सॉरी वाई बी एन एलिमेंट माई बैड आई आई टोल्ड एलिमेंट एंड आई रोट अबसेट स्लिप ऑफ पेन सो लेट वाई बी अ सबसेट ऑफ बी दैट मीन्स वाई बिलोंग्स टू दावर सेट ऑफ बी ओके सो लेट वाई बी अ सबसेट ऑफ बी विच मीन्स इट कम्स फ्रॉम द पावर सेट ऑफ बी and let there be an arbitrary element which is belonging to y okay so this is an arbitrary element arbitrary element okay so what does this mean it means that y also is a member of b okay let's call it as one now since pa is equal to pb can i repeat the same thing and say y will also or capital y will also be a subset of a that means the same element y will come from a also let's call it as 2 so eventually what are you trying to say you are trying to say that if there was an arbitrary element of b then that arbitrary element is also present in a thereby making b the subset of a isn't it so in light of these two this and this what do i conclude that a and b are equal right so i said the same thing but using y and uh, uh, power set of b uh can you be a little louder please so so you use the same thing but then changed x to y and then instead right. of a you took b to, yeah it is just to keep things very generic okay so yeah. whenever you are writing such proofs your proof will should be most generic proof not very very specific one that okay mine is true only for that biggest element or the names also should be very generic so i'm i'm trying to take a different name for an element okay so what do we conclude is that a is a subset of b and b is also a subset of a thereby resulting into the fact that a and b are equal hence proved that's what we wanted okay now as a school level and as a competitive level exam nobody is going to worry about these proofs but when you do this proof what will stay with you for life long is that this property pa equal to pb implies a equal to b and is further implied by will always be you know there in your mind okay so that is the main purpose of doing the proofs in these class it's not that they will be tested in any form Yes, Krish, that is what exactly we did. We proved A is a subset of B, and similarly B is also a subset of A, and hence A and B are equal. Okay, let's see what uh, Pranav has written. Sir, I didn't take the subset X and Y instead of saying same thing, same thing. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. That's absolutely fine. Okay, any questions? Any questions? Anybody? Uh, school days said it's mostly proofs only for UTs. Okay, okay. See, let's learn the concept rather than worrying about you know uh, where it will be asked, where it will not be. Fine. Okay, should we move on? Let's complete the property. Now we are going to property number four. Property number four. Maybe I will discuss. Uh, you know, uh, once we okay, let, let's let's take it because you already know union intersection from your school understanding also, right? Now I'm going to make a statement over here. P A union P B. Do you think this is equal to P A union B? What do you think? This statement is it true or is it false? Now, before you give out any answer, before you give out any answer, listen to me first. If you are saying it's true, then you have to give a generic proof. But if you are saying it's false. that is sufficient for you to show me an example where there is a set a there is a set b you found the power set of a you found the power set of b you took their union and then you also found out the power set of a union b and then realized that they are not the same okay so somebody is saying it's false then please give me an example where i can see that this property is failing okay take one minute not in a hurry take one minute
Okay. Very good, Pranav. So people are giving me examples. Very nice. Okay. So let's take a very simple example. A very, very simple example. And it cannot be, it cannot get simpler than this. Okay. Let's say A has just one. Okay. And B has just a two. Fine. So what is the power set of A? So power set of A, as we all know, will contain all the subsets of this set one. So it will only contain null set and only contain one. Correct. What about power set of B? What will it contain? Null set and the set to itself. Yes or no? What about A union B? So A union B will contain one comma two. And here, if you start writing P A union B, you would realize you'll end up getting null set. You'll end up getting set containing one, set containing just two, and a set of one comma two. Right? So what you realize here is that if I do the union of P A and P B, that means the first two terms, if I take the union, I'll get a null set. I'll get a set one. I'll get a set two, but I won't be getting a set of one comma two. Correct. So this clearly does not match with P A union B. So this statement is false. Absolutely right. I think all of you got it as false. Oh, is there anybody who said it true for it? Okay, no issues. So in reality, please note this down. And this is a question which has been asked in the regional entrance exams. Power set of A union power set of B is actually a subset of power set of A union B. So a direct question can be framed on this. So please note it, note this down. Very, very important. So power set of A union power set of B is actually a subset of power set of A union B. Okay. Now, can anybody tell me when would power set of A union power set of B become equal to P A union B or become an improper set subset of A union B? Can anybody tell me that? One of the sets is a null set. One of the set is a null set. Okay. More generically. More generically. If A is one of them is a subset of the other. Right. Yes. Arin, my question was, when do you think, when do you think P A union P B will actually become equal to P A union B? Okay. So this holds, this holds when either A is a subset of B or B is a subset of A or A and B are equal. Okay. So that's the only occasion or these are the only three occasions when you'll realize that the power set of A will be equal to, uh, sorry, power set of A union power set of B will be equal to power set of A union B. Is it fine? But in general, in general, they are not equal. Is it fine? Any questions? Okay, great. So let's now move on to the fifth property. Let's now move on to the fifth property. Uh, can I go to the fifth property? Have you all copied this down? Any questions? Sure, sure. Take your time. Take your time. Done. Okay. Okay. Let's move on. The fifth property says very important one. In fact, let me ask this as a question to you before I solve it. Power set of A intersection of power set of B. Do you think this is equal to power set of A intersection B? What do you think? Is this statement true or is this statement false? Now mind you, if you're saying a true, you have to give me a generic proof. And if you're saying a false, you can just give me a single example where this particular statement doesn't hold true. Take a minute.
Any idea, anybody? At least you have an idea whether it's going to be true or false. Proof of definitely I will be able to do it. No, Aditya, if you're saying it's true, then an example will not work. You can't, you can't prove something by giving one example where it is working. Right? But you can disprove something by giving an example. Okay, so Aryan thinks it's going to be false. Anybody else? Okay, Sadhna also thinks it's false. Omkar also think it's false. Okay, false. Okay, now to everybody's surprise, this is actually true. <laughs> Googly question, huh? No worries, let's prove it. Okay, now when you're proving that it is true, you have to give a generic proof. That is what basically you know I told you. The the previous approach is not going to help us here, because in the previous approach we were saying false. So one example was good enough. This time I'm claiming this is true. So I will give you now a generic proof. Now, how see, if you want to prove that P a intersection P B is equal to P a intersection B, please note that I have to accomplish two things. First, I need to prove that P a intersection P B is a null is a subset of P a intersection B. Okay. And also we have to prove that P a intersection B is also a subset of P a intersection P B. Correct. So when both of them are proved, then only I can conclude that these two sets are actually equal. So I'm coming from your understanding of power sets. Uh, sorry. I'm coming from your, from your understanding of subsets. Uh, Zion, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Hello, 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 my test. Am I audible to everyone? Oh, yeah, people can hear, people can hear me. Zayan, am I audible to you at least? Okay, he's not able to hear me. Yeah, so there's no point, you know, asking him whether you can hear me. Okay, just give me a second here. Yeah? I think uh, one of you is in trouble. So I'll just message him personally. Yeah, I've just messaged him to try to log in back again. Right. Yeah. So coming back. Yes. So if I want to prove that one set is equal to the other, I need to ultimately prove what I need to ultimately prove that one is the subset of the other. Right. And let's see, how do we do it? So I will be first proving the left side that P a intersection P B is a subset of P a intersection B. So what I'll do, I will take an subset of, or I can say I'll take a member of P a intersection P B. Please note, these are both power sets. So the intersection will also contain elements, which are sets at the end of the day. Right? So I should use a capital alphabet. It's a good practice. It's a good practice always to write sets in capital. Okay. So what I'm doing, I'm saying, let there be an arbitrary element capital X, which is present in the intersection of these two. Now I'm sure you would have done this in school that if a particular element is present in intersection of two sets, it means that particular element is present in this also and this also. Am I right? Everybody knows this. Everybody knows this. Right? Okay. So that means this capital X is a subset of A and this capital X is also a subset of B. Correct? No. Any questions so far? All right. That means that capital X 
is also a subset of a intersection b see if you are saying capital x is a member of power set of a that means it should be present as a subset of a right correct no and if you are saying that particular capital x is present in the power set of e that means capital x should also be a subset of b correct now there are two subsets of a and b the same subset is of a also the same subset is of b also which means that subset is also a subset of a intersection b because that subset would be comprised of such elements which are present in a and b simultaneously am i right so that capital x will also be a subset of a intersection b everybody is agreeing so far if anybody not please ping me okay aditya agrees with me anybody else most of you should agree with me okay now that means that yes sadhana i'll explain once again see what i'm trying to say here is first of all what i did i took one element from this left hand side okay and i called it capital x okay so let there be a capital x it's a set only but i'm calling it as element for the time being so let's say this is an element which comes from intersection of pa and pb that means that element should be present in pa and should also present in pb then only it is present in their intersection which means that particular element is actually a subset of a hence it was present in the power set of a similarly that particular element should have been a subset of b as well that is why it was present in the power set of b so that particular set now is actually a subset of intersection of a and b now this step is confusing to many people this is sir how it is because if you take any arbitrary element okay let's say i take any arbitrary element from x so let's say there is a small x which belongs to capital x now since this arbitrary element is coming from capital x which itself is a subset of a that means that arbitrary element is also present in a right similarly the same arbitrary element would also be present in b so what you are trying to say here that x is present in both a and b which means x is present in a intersection b isn't it so any element which basically came from a and b both will be present in both a intersection b or not correct that means what that means your capital x is a subset of a intersection b clear that is how this step actually came into picture is it fine all right now having said this let's go back to this step step number 1 and step number 2 so what you are saying that there is an element which is present in intersection of these two which is present in this and the same element is present in a intersection b also okay let me write it in the next step maybe sorry i yeah i should write this capital x is a member of p a intersection b yeah yeah sorry i wanted to write this as my two right so what you are saying one element that you have picked up it's present in this set and that element is also present in this set it's like saying your subset definition if small x belongs to a and the same set element small x belongs to b then a is a subset of b right in the same way you're trying to say is that this guy belongs to this and this guy also belong to this which clearly implies that pa intersection pb is going to be a subset of a intersection b power set which is what i wanted to prove here so half the proof is is covered over here so this part of the proof is taken care of any question any concerns right zayan you will be surprised that if i want to prove the right side this part i will actually write the same steps in a reverse order okay so some of you would be saying sir this is scamming you are you are doing the same step yes this is how it actually works right so in order to prove this i will see i'll exactly start from the last step i will say let there be an arbitrary element y i'm just keeping the name separate 
that belongs to PA intersection B. So what I have written, I have written this last step. Then what I will say, then Y belongs to A intersection B. Sorry, Y is a subset of A intersection B. Right? Because Y is an element of power set of A intersection B. So the same Y should be a subset of A intersection B. Which again means, which again means Y is a subset of A and Y is a subset of B. Which means y is an element of power set of a and y is also an element of power set of b which is actually the second last step or the second step which finally means y is a element of intersection of power set of a and power set of b right so you started with this and you concluded with this so what does this imply? So let me call this as three and let me call this as four. So from three and four, I can say that the power set of A intersection B is a subset of power set of A intersection power set of B. And in light of these two, in light of these two, what do we conclude? That power set of A intersection power set of B will be equal to power set of A intersection B. Note this down. This is a very, very important property and direct questions have been framed on this. Please note this down. Okay. So yes, by reversing the steps and of the James. first proof, we actually got the second proof. I mean, second part of the same. Note this down and then we are going to talk about the next concept, which is actually Operation on sets. Take your time to copy. I'm not rushing here. If you have any questions, any concerns, please do highlight. What is the difference between supersets and power sets? A lot of difference. See, superset is basically a set from where a subset has been carved out. Whereas power set is a sub, is a set of sub all the possible subsets of a given set. Okay, I'll give an example to make that clear to you. See, if I say there is a set B which contains A B. Okay. If I say there's another set. A, which is containing just only A, right? So here B is a superset of the set A, or you can write it like this. B is a superset of A, okay? Got it? Now, if I say power set of A, then what it will contain, or power set of B, whatever you want to call it, A, B. So power set of B, or power set of A, whatever you want to call it, it's up to you, will contain all the possible subsets of A, right? So this is a superset of A and this is the power set of A. There's the difference. If A is a subset of B, then B will be a superset of A by default. It's like saying, one is lesser than two, then two will automatically be greater than one. So at the same time, both, both of them will be applied. Isn't it? Okay, Aditya. Let's move on now to operations on sets. Operation on sets. So we'll be coming across various type of operations under sets. So I'll be starting with union of sets. Okay, union of sets. Okay, you have done this in school. So I'll be slightly faster here. So when you are taking union of two sets, how do we define it first of all? So what is the elementary definition of union of two sets? So I'll first write it as union of two sets and then they, I will extend it to more than two. So union of two sets will contain all such elements X such that X belongs to A or X belongs to B. 
okay so this particular operation can also be represented by a type of diagram which we call as the venn diagram most of you would have heard of this word from your school teachers venn diagram so what's a venn diagram let me tell you a brief history about it so long back ago in around 7 uh, in around 18th century there was a famous swiss mathematician called euler leonard euler you may must have heard of his name many a times uh, this fellow has got almost 90 references in the field of mathematics highest by any mathematician so far nobody so the next highest is 60 actually so you know the second highest person has got only 60 references in the field of mathematics and euler has got 90 references means his name has been used 90 times in some or the other theorem or you know some kind of you know uh, uh, laws or something what's the name of that with a dash in between v and a dash in between what is the name of the symbol that means for all ha huh, what is the name of it it's a greek symbol i don't know the name of it right now maybe i can google it out for you <laughs> it's not that important to know the name but yes you can google it out yeah so what did the uh, euler do he basically started you know representing some set of points by using closed figures and later on in almost 19th century there was an english mathematician called john wen he started giving circles or uh, rectangles figures to represent the same set of points so in order to honor these mathematicians we call such diagrams as euler wen diagram or sometimes just the wen diagram okay so if you start representing the elements of a set within these closed rectangular figures or these closed circles we basically call those figures as venn diagrams okay later on we will learn that for venn diagram universal set is or the universal sets venn diagram is represented by a rectangle and for sets we normally use circles oh, oh sorry circles of different shapes and sizes so this is normally used for a set okay so if i talk about the euler venn diagram for the union of two sets how do i write it or how do i make it so i make the universal set i'll talk about universal set also in some time so i call this rectangle shaped structure to be your universal set and within this universal set i am going to represent my set a and set b okay so let's say a is this and b is the one which i am making in orange okay so this is your set a and this is your set b now what is the region represented by a union b so everything which falls under this zone everything that falls under this zone they will be considered to be a part of a union b so it should be either in a or in b right please note this or is inclusive or inclusive or means it could be present in both of them also and hence that is the reason why i have shaded the overlap area as well is it fine any questions okay so if i scale this up this has scaled this up if i talk about union of multiple sets a1 a2 a3 da 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 da, da till an what will it represent it will represent a set of all x's such that that x comes from a1 or a2 or a3 and so on and so forth is that fine any questions very simple not to worry about so the union so must contain all the elements sorry present in a and b uh, yeah. must it contain all the elements present in a and b or some specific elements would do all the elements which are present in a and b i'll give okay. you an example okay acha by the way such kind of representation you can also write with a elongated u let me write to the left yeah elongated u ai like this okay this is just a short form notation you may have seen this notation while you are solving questions on sets so this is just a notation which says i am taking the union of all ais i going from 1 to 
Okay. Now, just for Zane, uh, to give an example of uh, union, let's say I have one, two, three as set A, and set B contains, let's say, uh, three, four, five. So when I have to write A union B, I will only list down the elements which are present in A or B. And if some element is getting repeated in both of them, we can only make a ref mention of it once in their union. Please do not write three two times because three is present in A also and three is present in B also. Because it will go against our definition where we had learned that every element in a set is only written once. Is it fine? Any questions with respect to this? Any question with respect to this? Yes. So if somebody is asking me, how do I write the union if there is more than three, more than two sets? Simple. All you need to do is shade everything which belongs to these sets. So I'm just taking an example here. Let's say this is our universal set. This is set A. This is set B. This is set C. So I will end up shading everything over here. Is it fine? Any questions, any concerns, do let me know. All fine? All right. Uh, which intersection are you talking about? Intersecting is common, right? You're talking about intersection of all of them? We will come to it. Don't worry. Let's go step by step. Let's go step by step. Now, please note down the following. Please note down the following. Number one, if an element does not belong to A union B, <clears throat> okay, if an element does not belong to A union B, it implies that that element will not belong to A and that element will not belong to B as well. This, this logical statement is what we know as the De Morgan's law. Right, which we are going to study in our laws of sets or algebra of sets. This says complement of A union B is A complement intersection B complement. So this law is called the Morgan's law. <laughs> okay, the Morgan's law. Is it fine? So if there is something which is not lying in A union B, means it's lying outside. So it is in the universal set, but it is lying outside. So it is, if it is lying outside, it cannot be in A and it cannot be in B either. Because if it was in A or in B exclusively, then it would have appeared in A union B. Aditya, see this, see this point. Okay, let's, let's take a point over here. So if I take a point which is outside, let's say there's a point, there's an element which lies here. Okay, let's say call this element E1. Right. Now, this element E1 is not present in A union B. And you can see from the Venn diagram that if it is not present in A union B, it cannot be in A and it cannot be in B. Okay. My dear Aryan, I have not yet reached the complement of a set and my dear, your spelling of complement is wrong. Thamba, wait, I will come to it. I'm not going to leave out anything. I'm going to cover more than what you expect in this chapter. Okay. Let's wait. No, we have not covered it. We have not covered complement of a set because we have not covered what is the universal set. Okay. I will come to it. Let's go step by step. Okay. Next thing. Very important. If A union B is equal to A union C, right? Let me drop this if because I'm going to use symbol, right? Last class itself, I told I, we should be using mathematical symbols rather than writing English, too much English. Then please note, this does not imply B is equal to C. And that's what I feared somebody will say, <laughs> okay? If A union B is equal to A union C, it does not imply B is equal to C. Now, let me give an example to, you know, substantiate this. Let's say, let's say, a contains one, two. Okay. Uh, B contains, let's say, let's say, let's say three. Okay. And C contains, let's say two comma three. Now, what do you realize from this example is that a union B, which is one, two, three, 
and a union c which is also 1 2 3 they are equal okay so these two are equal but what do you realize here that despite a union b and a union c is equal our b and c sets were not equal <laughs> right so if somebody says a union b is equal to a union c does it definitely mean that b is equal to c the answer is no b and c may be different sets also getting my point so this is what we say as left hand cancellation fails left hand cancellation fails in case of union so don't start cancelling things out just the way you do with numbers okay it's a wrong 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 practice to cancel or give the sets the same treatment as what you give to numbers okay so don't just cancel it off any question any concerns similarly even if i switch the order that means if i write b union a is equal to c union a it does not imply B is equal to C. So this is what we say. Right hand cancellation fails. Right hand cancellation fails. Okay. So in a set, never start cancelling things on the right of something or left of something like the way you do it for numbers. Any questions, any concerns? Any questions, any concerns? All right, so should we move on now to, 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 to the concept of universal set? So I was waiting for the union operation to be done. And now we'll be talking about the universal set. Now, many people ask me, sir, why don't you do universal sets under types of sets. Why did you wait for a union to be done? That's, there's a reason for that. Okay. So let me explain this to you. Then you'll automatically understand the reason. By the way, anybody can tell me the definition of a universal set. Anybody? So universal set is written by symbol Xi or U. Okay. Uh, Aditya, yes, more or less you're right. So universal set is a set which contains all elements X, which are in the context of the problem. X is in the context of the problem. Now this is very important. This is very, very important. So note this down. A universal set is a set which contains all the elements which are present in the context of the problem unless until stated otherwise unless stated by the definer by the person who is defining the universal set for you let me give an example what do i mean by context of the problem see let's say i talk about a set a which has got one two three let's say i have another set b which has got three four five six and I take another set C, let's say seven, eight. Okay. Now, if I ask you, can you suggest a universal set for it? Right? So when you're suggesting a universal set for it, you will only incorporate those elements which are in the context of the problem. That means you can only have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's it. In short, what are you doing? You are taking the union of all the sets A, B, C, which are present in the context of the question. Getting my point. So don't start taking the universal set as all natural numbers. No, that is not a right way to choose a universal set. Universal set is a set. I'm repeating again. Universal set is a set which contains the elements which are in the context of the problem. Getting my point? Unless until stated otherwise by the person. So there are many occasions when the person himself or herself will tell you that, see, this is the universal set. In that case, you have to follow what he or she is telling you. But if you want to make your universal set with respect to that given question, then all you need to do is take all possible elements which are present, right? Put them in a set that will be the universal set. In short, you are taking the union of all the sets which are present in the question. Right. 
now from the union from the concept of universal set comes out the concept of complement of a set okay so let's now talk about complement of a set a uh, superset and universal set very good question asked by sadhana superset universal set acts like a superset of all the sets present in the context of the problem so your psi is the superset of a psi is a superset of b psi is a superset of c got it sadhana is that clear so so if i want to write a, a universal set you just write x is in the context of the problem yes i mean this is for the definition of you definition for you to understand but you in reality you have to take the union of all the elements present in that given set so so what will be the set builder form for this set builder form for see when when you are writing the set builder form you can write any definition by which you can produce that so i can say all natural numbers from 1 to 8 okay so right. okay yeah okay fine yeah right so you cannot write a set builder form for an operation for the set yes, itself, got it, got the it. outcome you can write a set builder form so when i look at this i can write a set builder form for it see set builder form is nothing but a statement by which you can produce that set without ambiguity that is set builder form uh, krish has a question x belongs to union b i, I didn't understand that krish a large question so then how does universal set change if set c is not in the context of the problem yeah if c is not in the context of the problem then the universal set will only contain 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and 8 will not be there got it raj okay 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 let's move on to complement of a set so i'm i'm covering the universal set and complement together by the way this is the spelling of complement P L E, not P L I. P L I means praising somebody, giving somebody a compliment, right? So you give yourself, your parents a compliment if they, you know, let's say your mom cooks something which is very tasty to it. You give her a compliment, mom, you you uh, cook such a tasty food. Okay, that's a compliment. Okay, don't write P L I. Okay, so what is compliment of a set? So complement of a set is represented by symbol A bar. Okay, you can write A with a small you know dash or a with a superscript of c they all mean the same so how is it defined i normally prefer using the bar because i find it convenient to use so it is basically a set which contains such elements which are present in the universal set and not present in a right so when i talk about difference you will yeah krish whatever you have used it's a very appropriate you uh, know uh, so krish says it's xi minus a so that is the complement of a okay since i have not talked about difference operation hence i was slightly skeptical of using it but since you have already used it in school maybe you will find you know convenience to understand this so how do you represent it in a venn diagram so in a venn diagram let's say this is your xi so complement of a set let's say this is my set a okay so complement of a set will be nothing but everything which is outside a so everything which is outside a but within the universal set so i'm just making like a sun ray coming out okay so this region represents a complement is it fine any question any concerns all right So if I go to this example and I ask you, hey, what is B complement? What will you say? What is B complement in this? Read the definition. Everything which is present in universal set psi, but not present in B. Oh, right. So it will be one, two, seven, and eight. Absolutely right. Any question? Any concerns? Okay. one important property here i would like you to remember if a is a subset of b then please note that b complement will be a subset of a complement if a is a subset of b then b complement is a subset of a complement not the other way around that's a mistake which people do people think that if a is a subset of b then a complement is a subset of b complement no no that doesn't work if a is a subset of b then a complement will be a superset of b complement 
getting the proof get, uh, getting this property okay very very important note this down note this down and for your homework you will prove this for me so give me a proof for this particular property okay easy one you know how to prove one is a subset of the other right so if you take an element okay so please please give a proof to me uh, you can either pass uh, you know message me personally or put it on the group also it is up to you let's move on let's move on so we have already done this operation of union before and now we are going to do the operation of uh, so we are going to do an operation on intersection will this proof come in the school uts um, i can't say that depends on your teacher how how uh, you know your teacher is teaching in the class that depends there are some teacher who likes doing proof there are some teacher who do not so those who like doing proofs they will definitely ask you so prove this right yes you have to prove this this one which we have put a asterisk mark for your homework okay next we'll move on to the second operation the second operation is the operation of intersection of sets intersection of sets so intersection of two sets i'll start with so intersection of two sets means a set containing all such elements x such that x belongs to a and x belongs to b that means if an element is chosen from a intersection b then that element will be belonging to a and and this is a logical connector and it will also belong to b okay how do i represent this with a venn diagram so in a venn diagram if i have to represent it so let me make let me make the universal set and let me make the two sets a and b with a circle let me use a different color okay so this is our universal set xi this is set a this is set b so this portion this portion is where okay the elements of a intersection b will lie is it fine and if you just scale this up if you want to do the intersection of all ais from 1 to n then it will contain all such x which actually belong to a1 and belong to a2 and belong to a3 da 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 is it fine any questions any concerns any questions any concerns okay so let's have the set of properties for it properties of intersection first note this down if you have any questions do let me know okay the first thing just like we had discussed in the previous uh, union if an element does not belong to a intersection b what does this mean it means that the element does not belong to a or the element does not belong to b see very simple if i take any element if i take an any element which does not belong to a intersection b so it can either be here so in this case it doesn't belong to b so this part will be true correct right so this is false this is false this is true so overall since it is or this will be true right correct if your element is here then this will be true and this will be false correct and if your element is here then both will be true true so this will anyways be true in all these three situations right so when an element does not belong to a intersection b then either of the two or both of them may be happening that means it is not in a okay it may be in b but it is not in a or it is not in b it may be in a or it may be not in both of them got it and this is what forms the next de morgan's law or the second law of de morgan which says a intersection b complement is a complement union b complement 
Okay, this is what we call as the second of your De Morgan's law. Okay, we'll talk about the these laws as well in some time. Is it fine? Any questions? Any concerns? Anybody has? Okay. So the first like part we have taken in the previous scenario, A intersection B, if it is equal to A intersection C, it does not imply B is equal to C. Okay. Similarly, if you say B intersection A is equal to C intersection A, this also doesn't imply B equal to C. That means your left hand cancellation, your left hand cancellation fails in case of intersection also. And this means your right hand cancellation fails in intersection also. Now, can I give an example where it is failing? In fact, you give me an example. Let's hear it out from you. Can you give me an example where there are three sets involved, A, B, and C, such that A union, A intersection B and A intersection C are equal, but still B and C are different. Give me an example. Anybody, I'm waiting. A equals one, two, three. Okay. A equals two, three. Okay. B is equal to two, three. Okay. And uh, C is equal to two, three, four. Very good. Okay. So what do you realize here is that A intersection B will be having two, three only. And that's the same as A intersection C also. But B and C are not equal. Is it fine? Any questions? Any concerns? Okay. If A intersection B is a null set, it implies that A and B are disjoint. A and B are disjoint. That means as a Venn diagram, if you make the Venn diagram, then A and B would be separate, separate from each other like this. Okay. Because they will have no element in common to each other. Okay. So if A intersection B is a null set, then A and B are disjoint. Like even numbers or even natural numbers and odd natural numbers, disjoint. Or even numbers and odd numbers, they are disjoint. They cannot have anything in common. Okay. Acha, what about real number and imaginary number? Are they disjoint sets? <laughs> no, <laughs> they will have one element zero in common. Zero is both real and imaginary at the same time. Yes, break will be at seven uh, seven o'clock. Why you just hungry now? Only it's just one hour twenty minutes class. <laughs> but you are at home. I mean, okay, okay, okay. All right. So can we move on? I have a question before we move on. If A union B is equal to A union C and A intersection B is equal to A intersection C, then B is equal to C. Do you think, first of all, is this true or false, first of all? What's your verdict? Okay, so Aditya says no, it is not true. Achha, there, there are two Adityas. Who is who is the one who is saying? Aditya Anand is there and Aditya. Okay, fine. Okay. Anybody else? Some people are saying it's true. Some people are saying it's false. Okay. Okay. Now, those who are saying it's false, give me an example. Give me an example of three sets A, B, and C where A union B and A union C are equal. And so is A intersection B and A intersection C are also equal. And B and C are not equal to each other. So I basically am requesting you to give me an example of such three sets which satisfy these two but doesn't satisfy this B equal to C.
So I, I'll be giving you a proof for this. Basically, that proof will go through uh, some some concepts which we are going to cover a little later on. It's a futuristic concept for us today, but we'll be covering in today's class only. Okay. Yes. Anybody who has this example, people who are saying not true. Okay. Now, people who are saying true, you have to give me a generic derivation for it. How? So is my is my uh, you know offer to both these parties clear? If you're saying it is false, so false people, this is for you. Give an example where this is not working out. That means despite this condition being fulfilled, this condition will fulfill. B and C are not equal to each other. Give me one example that is for the people who are saying false. For the people who are saying true, you have to prove it. <laughs> so we'll say, sir, I know we should have said false only, but trust me, you will not be able to find any example because it is true statement. Okay. And it is not false. So people who said false, very sorry. <laughs> it is actually a true statement. Now let me prove it. In fact, whatever I'm going to use for the proof, you're going to learn a little later on, but I'm sure you would have got an idea of it from your school teachers. Okay. So let's start with. A union B equal to A union C. Okay, so we know that it's given, it's a truth. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take intersection with B on both the sides. Okay, so I'm going to take intersection with B on both the sides. So now, have you heard of a property called distributive law? From your school teachers, you have heard of distributive law? No? Yes or no? How many of you have heard of it? Okay. Some say no, some say yes. Okay. Uh, okay. We, you learned it. Okay. Now people who have not learned it. In fact, I'll be taking that up in some time. Distributive law says like this. So if you have something like this X intersection, Y union Z, then you can write it as X intersection Y union X intersection Z. This is what we call as distribution of distribution of intersection over union. And you can also do vice versa. You can distribute union over intersection also like this. Okay. So this is called distribution of union over intersection. Yes. In multiplication also you have learned it exactly. Narin. Okay. So I'm going to use this distributive law for this set. Now, most of you would be thinking, sir, aapne padhaya to nahi hai distributive law abhi. Aapne question pose diya. No worries. I will teach it eventually. But since this concept was rhyming with our concept, which we took up in union and intersection, I thought I will make, I will take this question before I move on because this has come in the past year papers. So if I take the intersection with B on both the sides. Can I say the left side is B intersection A union B intersection B. Correct. And this side will be B intersection A union B intersection C. If an element belongs to A union B and A union C, the elements should belong to B or C. No, not necessarily. It could belong only to A only, not, not in B, not in C. Zion. <laughs> okay. Now see here. This is as good as a B. B intersection B is as good as a B. Okay. And this is as good as A intersection B. And this side, again, I'm writing it as a intersection B and this side, I'm writing it as B intersection C. Okay. So everything I've written same is just that B intersection B I've written it to be just a B. Is it fine? Everybody's fine with that. Okay. Now everybody, please think a bit and answer is, isn't a intersection B a subset of B. Isn't A intersection B a subset of B? Correct. 
so can i say union of b with a intersection b will be as good as a b yes sir so can i say left hand side becomes a b right hand side i will continue writing it as it is okay now since a intersection b is equal to a intersection c i can write the same statement as b is equal to a intersection c union b intersection c okay let's call it as the first result let's call it as the first result so i'm i'm taking a pause here any step that you have not understood which is right now on your screen feel free to ask me uh you were talking about the distributive law omkar we will prove it when we take the law okay as of now take it with a pinch of salt when i'm taking the law i'll prove that as well sir third step yes chetanya with step third step sir, yes sir okay so b intersection b what is the intersection of karnataka with karnataka karnataka only so b intersection b is b only correct yes sir b intersection a is a intersection b so that is what i have written now since b is a superset of a intersection b see a intersection b is only this part right correct this part is a intersection b and yes, sir, this yes. is a and this is b so this part is a subset of b can i say union of superset with a subset will be the superset itself yes or no and then in the next step what did i write i wrote a intersection b as a intersection c because it was given in the question look at the second condition a intersection b is equal to a intersection c so i yes, use it yes sir clear everybody clear any question acha before i forget uh, uh, some people uh, uh, they are asking about uh, their class pro marks not reflecting the test they have taken so please note that normally we take around a week to update it because this test is not only taken by you it is also taken by other centers that we have so uh, Uh, please don't expect the marks to be reflected the immediately you are taking a test because the testing platform is learnest whereas the marks platform is class pro so it's a it's a transmission of marks from one platform to the other which is actually not done not done automatically it is manually done okay so once everybody has taken the test so give at least one week time then only your marks will be reflected okay it will not be reflected the moment you take a test now and and you go and check your class pro your marks will be sitting there no it takes a week's time you can check the previous week's assignment but for the current week you have to give it a you have to give 7 days a uh, time for it to reflect okay all right so i, I think some of you were you know uh, slightly <laughs> uh, shaken up and you didn't see that marks appearing despite you have taken the test so give some time it will be reflected so it is manually done actually all right now i have to prove that b is equal to c so i have only uh, reached this step right so let's do the similar set of steps now by taking intersection with c on both the sides so i'll be taking intersection with c on both the sides okay again here i will be using my distributive law so this will be c intersection a union c intersection b correct yes or no yes or no right and here also i will do the same operation c intersection acha by the way this is something which i can write in one shot why because a union c is a superset of c a union c is a superset of c so what is the intersection between a superset and a subset the subset isn't it so since a let me write that over here since a in union c is a superset of c the intersection of a union c with c will be c It's like asking somebody, what is the intersection of Karnataka with India? 
Karnataka only, isn't it? And now, since I know, uh, let me just rephrase it. I can write it as A intersection C, and this I can write it as B intersection C. And now, since since A intersection C is equal to A intersection B as per given by the question, I can write this as A intersection B union B intersection C equal to C. Let's call it as two. Now, dear students, compare first and second. Compare first and second. In fact, let me write this as this. Yeah. And let me call this as second rather than calling this as second. Yeah. So compare this with this. They're equal, right? So show should be the left hand side of this and the right hand side of this. Correct. So from one and two, can I make this conclusion that since the right side of the first expression matches with the left side of the second expression, so the left side of the first should match with the right side of the second as well. So B becomes equal to C and that is what we wanted to prove. Is it clear? Any questions, any concerns? Now this question has been asked multiple number of times in competitive exams. So the result, of course, it is important, but even the proof can be asked to you in your school papers as well. So please note this down and do let me know if you have any questions. How they can ask this as an MCQ format. So they will say like this Aditya. So they'll say a union B is equal to a union C and a intersection B is equal to a intersection C. Then which of the following is true? Then they'll say B is equal to C or they'll say B is a subset of C or C is a subset of B. None of these like that. Yes. Yes, yes, Krish, you can prove anything using Venn diagram. Okay. So Venn diagram is an another way to prove things, but trust me, at some places, Venn diagram works miracles. At some places, the algebra offset works miracles. Okay. So let's carry on. Intersection is done. Our next operation is difference of sets. Difference of two sets. So difference of two sets is written as this. What is the definition? What is the elementary definition of difference of two sets? So A minus B contains all such elements X such that X belongs to A and X does not belong to B, right? So as a matter of Venn diagram, as a matter of Venn diagram, let's say this is my A and this is my B and let me also make the universal set. Okay, so let's say this is my A and this is my B. So A minus B is represented by this zone. So elements which are present in A and not in B. Got this point? So this point is called A minus, this region is called A minus B region in the Venn diagram. Okay. Now please understand this. Please understand this. By the very definition of A minus B, you can also write it as A intersection with B complement. See, it should present in A and not B. Right. So A minus B is same as saying A intersection B complement. Very, very important, uh, you know, you can say identity, which is used in several places, several, several places. Understood? Understood? Any question? Any question? Okay. Now, many people ask me, sir, isn't A minus B as good as saying? Remove from A all the members which are present in A intersection B also. Yes, why not? Why not? Both mean the same thing. Okay. So I'll give an example if you want to understand this through, uh, you know, a set. Let's say A is 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay. And B is, let's say, 3, 4, 5, 6. When I say A minus B, I have to only state those elements which are present in A and not in B. 
So which elements will come? You tell me. Write it on the chat box quickly. It should be present in A and it should not be present in B. Right. Only one comma two will come. Absolutely right. So for this particular example, when I'm writing, I will write one, two here, three, four in the intersection zone and five, six here, as you can see from the definition. So only one, two will fall in the shaded area. Only one, two will fall in the shaded area. Is it fine? Any questions? Similarly, if I say B minus A, what does it mean? It means a set containing all those elements which are present in B and not present in A. Okay. So which region will this represent? It will be represented by this region. Okay. So this is your B minus A area. Correct. Any question, any concerns here? So in the same example, if I have to find B minus A, what will be my answer? What will be my answer for B minus A? 5 comma 6. Absolutely right. Simple question. Is this fine? Any question, any doubt related to what is this operation of difference? Difference of two sets doesn't mean their intersection. This is one, one of the very, I can say, basic error that people make. Difference do not mean intersection. See, A minus B is 1 comma 2, but A intersection B is 3 comma 4. There's a difference between the two. Let's not get confused. Yes, very good question. What is A minus B if A and B are disjoint? Very good question. You tell me the answer. If A intersection B is a disjoint set, what will be A minus B? So it is as good as asking, what will be A minus A intersection B? Which is as good as asking, remove from A, nothing. Remove from A, nothing. So it will be A itself, no? Absolutely. Okay. All right. So let's write down a few properties or few important points. Let me write important points or note. Number one. Number one. A minus B. B minus A and A intersection B are pairwise disjoint. Are pairwise disjoint. What is the meaning of pairwise disjoint? Pair by disjoint means if you take any two of them and take their intersection, it will be a null set. So if I take the first two, let's say A minus B and B minus A, this will be a null set. If I take A minus B and A intersection B, this will be a null set. If I take A intersection B and B minus A, this will be a null set. Is it fine? Aryan has a question. How would you highlight A intersection B complement? A intersection B complement, you want to uh, come to it for, by a Venn diagram? Okay, so let me show it by a Venn diagram. See, let's say this is A and let's say this is B. Okay. Now you are asking me Aryan to represent A intersection B complement, correct? So let's figure out B complement first. So for B complement, I will shade this zone, which is outside B. Right. Okay. Now see the gray line that you have shaded outside B, where does it intersect with A? So what is the intersection part? So this is your A part. So where does the gray line intersect with A? So the gray line intersects with A only in this zone. Correct? Which is actually your A minus B zone. That's why A minus B and A intersection B complement are same. Clear? Okay. Next point to be written. Please note this down. Second point. A minus B union B minus A union A intersection B makes the complete A union B. Okay. So basically it's trying to say that if you take this yellow region, the blue region and this non-shaded region together and take their union, it will generate A union B. That is 
a minus b union b minus a is nothing but a union b minus a intersection b both are the same things just written in different different way okay no need to remember it no need to remember it it is automatically evident from the graph it is automatically evident from the graph fine any questions any questions any concerns note down because you know uh, some of you may not be as fast in copying it down so please make a note of it and please feel free to stop me in case you want in fact you all are asking you know questions a lot of questions which is very good in case anywhere anywhere you are stuck you want to know more please feel free to interrupt okay don't worry about that there are other people in the session they'll get disturbed because of me nothing like that we all are here for ourselves okay so you are the person most important person for yourself so please ask whatever doubts is coming in your mind is it fine any questions any concerns okay let's now move on to the symmetric difference uh one second so zan has a question would it be i suppose all these two to venn diagram See, we can solve this using Venn diagram also, Aryan. We can also use algebra of sets to get it. Okay, we'll see it in some time once we learn the algebra of sets. Okay, Zan, it would be same as union. Zan, your your doubt is clear, sir. If you ask to prove yes, the yes. second one, how exactly do you disconnect between two? Okay, so if I want to prove the second one, I will prove it later on by using algebra of sets. Okay, so I will prove it by using algebra or laws of sets little later on when diagram you can easily prove it when diagram you can easily prove it <coughs> if you want the other way around without a when diagram i will prove it by using algebra of sets yeah i'll do it by that method for now okay before that i'll move on to the next operation which is called symmetric difference of sets symmetric difference of of sets so when i say symmetric difference of sets a and b it basically means it basically means a minus b union b minus a okay so when i make a venn diagram when i make a venn diagram let's say this is my set a and b okay and this is my this is my universal set so when i say a delta b what what do i have to do if for a delta b a delta b is the symmetric difference of two sets now why it is called symmetric difference because when i shade the region you will realize that the region is symmetrically placed almost not exactly about the intersection so this zone a minus b union b minus a this zone is what we call as a delta b okay read it as symmetric difference of a and b is it fine so you can also say it is a union b minus a intersection b clear what is this triangle this triangle is a delta triangle it's a symbol that we use for expressing symmetric difference a greek symbol let's take an example if i say a has 1 2 3 4 and b has 3 4 5 6 then what is a delta b tell me tell me quickly a delta b okay. 1 4 5 ha a minus b right the elements of this down and b minus a which is 5 and 6 so 1 2 5 6 1 2 5 6 absolutely is it fine any questions okay not that important an operation but yes if if they ask you this uh, in the the competitive exams you should be able to answer what is the symmetric difference of a and b is it fine okay with this i am now going to take a uh, in fact it's 647 uh, what i'll do now is i'll give you a break because i don't want to start with algebra of sets because if i start with it 
it'll almost take me half an hour or something like that so let's take a break right now let's take a break as per my laptop the time is 6:47 uh we'll meet exactly at 7:02 pm a 15 minute break and as you all know during the break the camera and my mic is muted so even i'll be taking a break so i may not be at my seat but see you exactly at 7:02 okay okay so let's proceed with our second last leg of this chapter where we are going to discuss about algebra of sets algebra or laws governing sets okay now these laws they have all come from logic actually right so they are very fundamental and they have come from your understanding of logic and that's the reason why the same law you will find also used in logic circuits in electronics domain in computer science domain in logic circuits you will realize or logic gates what do you call it these laws are basically used okay and the proof of these laws will be so so fundamental that many a times people will say said this is scam okay uh, i mean they are they are just based out of logic nothing else all right so what are these laws let's let's start listing them down and let's start you know discussing them one by one so the first law that i'm going to talk about is idempotent law idempotent law what is an idempotent law the word idempotent means something which is applied to itself right so there are two idempotent laws a union a gives you a and a intersection a gives you a okay now if i give you the proof for this you may you know laugh and fall off your chair also it is so trivial it is so trivial and obvious right so let's say i want to prove this okay so basically what i'll do is i'll take an arbitrary element which belongs to a union a okay so I'll, i'm just proving the first part proof for a so what does this mean it means x belongs to a or x belongs to a as per the definition of a union a which means x is just belonging to a so what does this mean it means a union a is a subset of a okay similarly write down the same set of steps in a reverse way so if you say there is an element let me name this time y yeah let's say y is a member of a that means y is belonging to a or you can also write it y belonging to a doesn't make any difference which means y belongs to a union a which means if an element is belonging to one set and it is also belonging to the other means this is a subset of this correct sorry a not b i don't know why did i write a b so from 1 and 2 you can say a is equal to a union a okay very trivial i mean there is nothing like you know which is uh, beyond logic it is just logical based statement nothing else okay similarly you can prove the other one by the way since they are so trivial and so predictive i will not be proving them going forward okay i'll not be proving them going forward <clears throat> sir is that a or small a or both are capital a which one you're talking about okay you got it okay so idempotent law clear any question with respect to idempotent law next identity law maybe i'll write it on the same page because identity law so these laws can be used directly while solving any problem or proving any identity of sets without bothering about the proof for this because they are very fundamental it's as fundamental as why there is why does gravity exist okay it is as fundamental as why two like charges repel and two unlike charges attract right so they are very fundamental means very very basic and we basically use them as a building unit to prove anything so identity law has two laws under it it says union of any set with a null set is the same set whereas intersection of any set with the universal set is also the same set okay so these two laws are called identity laws 
Note this down. Next law that we are going to talk about, next law that we are going to talk about is the boundedness law. Boundedness law. So boundedness law uses the same similar expression instead now you are saying a union null set you'll say a intersection null set so a intersection null set is always a null set whereas a union a universal set will always be a universal set what is this e looking thing e looking thing is the universal set over here by the way this is not called e looking thing it is actually called xi x i xi okay ah, i can write you see why i don't write you is because you may mix it with the union operation that's why okay so why has it been given the name boundedness law boundedness law is because no matter whatever is your set a its intersection with the null set will be bounded to means it will just drop down to the null set so it's bounded by a null set right so yeah. intersection of any set with a null set will go as less as a null set not you know not any further than that similarly union of a set with a universal set will go to the universal set so it's bounded by null and the universal set so as to say okay thank you all right so now the next property that we are going to talk about is the complementation law complementation law so under the complementation law we are going to talk about five sub laws number a complement of a null set is the universal set complement of a universal set is the null set they are very obvious okay complement of a complement gives you the same set back okay and this is very important a intersection a complement will always be null and a union a complement will always be the universal set so these two are very important okay we'll be using this or this will be seen many a times when we are solving problems on algebra of sets. So C is complement of A complement, right? Right. C is complement of a complement. So double complementation gives you the same set back. Double slash means this. Yeah. This is read as complement of a complement. I mean, that's not a relevant question to be asked. We do bar more. See, it depends on question to question. Okay. All right. All right, so we will now move on to our next law, which is called the commutative law. Commutative law, you would have already, you know, seen it in uh, your addition subtraction, where it says that the order in which you are keeping your operands doesn't matter. So whether you do two plus three or three plus two doesn't matter. Whether you do two into three or three into two doesn't matter. So those kind of operations are called commutative operations or commutative law. So here, even in case of union and intersection, it doesn't matter whether you take A union B or B union A, it means the same. And it doesn't matter whether you take A intersection B or B intersection A, it is the same result. So there is no difference created by changing the position of these sets with respect to that union or intersection operation. Okay. Next law that we are going to talk about is associative law. I hope I'm not going fast in case you need some time to copy things down. Do let me know. Done? Okay. 
So what is the associative law? Associative law says that if you're doing A union B and then taking a union with C, it actually doesn't matter the order of association. That means A union B taken first and then union with C or B union C taken first and then union with A or for that matter, A union C taken first and then union with B, all of them give you the same result. So the order in which you are taking the union is immaterial. Same goes with intersection also. If you do A intersection B, then intersection with C, or you take B intersection C first and then intersection with A, or you do A intersection C and then intersection with B, they do not you know, make any difference to your final result. Okay, so this is called associative law because they are associating with each other very, very freely, very, very freely. Okay, please make a note of it. Then we can move on to the distributive law. Done, can we move on? Distributive law. Let's write it in yellow. The name distributive law. Distributive law, you already have got a glimpse of it, but I'll be proving this law since somebody was asking the proof for it. So you can distribute intersection over union and union over intersection. So I'll be just proving this one first. See, again, it comes from logic. And you will again feel that you have been, this has been scammed for proving. Okay, so if I want to prove this law, what I have to show, I have to show two things. So if I have to prove this, I have to show two things from here. One, I have to show this guy is a subset of this guy. Correct. And at the same time, I have to show that this guy is also a subset of this guy. Is it fine? Okay. Now what I'll do is I will only prove one of them because for the next one, you already know that you have to write the same set of steps reverse manner. Okay. So I'll just do this part. The next part, you can easily do it by writing the same set of steps in a reverse fashion. So here I will say, let there be an arbitrary element X, which belongs to A intersection B union C. What does it mean? It means X belongs to A and X belongs to B union C. It's all logic. It's all logic. There is nothing new about these proofs. Correct? Oh, sorry. C. Okay, so I'm just writing this in terms of logic, in terms of and or connectors. So now this is as good as saying X belongs to A and X belongs to B or X belongs to A and X belongs to C. See, what are you trying to say here is that, let's say, I'm giving you a very simple analogy. Let's say there is a party. Okay. Oh, so and doubt. Yes. Tell me. So for X belongs to A, so you've written and X belongs to B union C. So shouldn't it be X belongs to A or X belongs to B union C? Because okay. it's intersection. So the second step, first step, basically, X belongs to A and so shouldn't be or because it's intersection. Intersection is and, not or. It should be and. Oh, yeah, yeah. So my bad. Uh, no worries. Okay. Now, see, it is like saying that that element X must definitely be in A. And it could be either in B or C or in both of them. Right? So think as if there is a, you know, there is a party. Okay. And uh, there are three friends. A, B, and C. Right? A says, I will definitely go to the party. Right? Let's say that's the party that is given by A himself. So he has to be in the party. But B and C, they say that either B can come or C can come, not both, or both of them. See, only B can come or only C can come or both of them can come. So how many possibilities are there? So the possibility that can arise is A and B are there in the party. Correct? A and C can be there in the party. Correct? 
or all of them can be there in the party. So this or that you're seeing is an ex inclusive or every time that or we use is an inclusive or. So that party could be attended by AB, AC or all the ABC. Okay, that is what it is trying to say from our logic. Which further boils down to saying that X belongs to A intersection B or X belongs to A intersection C. Which means X belongs to A intersection B union A intersection C. So what did you start with? You started with this and you concluded with this. Right? So what does this imply? It implies A intersection B union C is a subset of A intersection B union A intersection C. Right? And for the second part, I would not do anything. I will say in the second part, please write the steps written on the left side in reverse order. That's it. So I will not waste your and my time writing it again. So can you show the left side once again, like yeah, 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 for a minute? Yeah. It's completely logic. That's why they are called fundamental laws. So you kind of use distributive law in the proof itself. Sorry. So you kind of use distributive law while proving this. Uh, right. Problem. That's what many people will say, sir, you use the law while proving the law, <laughs> but that is so fundamental. We basically support the support this by saying that it's a logically driven statement. Okay. Any questions? You got it, sir. Okay. So let's now move on. Let's now move on. All right. So this is the second, this is the first part of the distributive law. Second part of the distributive law, I'll write it over here. Same thing. It's the distribution of union over intersection. So it goes like A union B intersection A union C. Okay. Not only that, you can also distribute union over union as well. Right? See, union over union always follows associative law, which we already did, but you can also apply distributive law as well. And you can also apply distributive law of intersection over intersection. Like this also. So even I include C and D also in my list. Okay. So this is called distribution of distribution of intersection over union. That is your A. B is called distribution of union over intersection. Okay. And C is called distribution of union over union. And D is called distribution of intersection over intersection. Is it fine? Any question? One of the most, most widely used laws that you will be requiring to solve problems. Okay. And all these laws you can always prove by Venn diagram also. So they can all be proved. All can be proved or proven by using Venn diagram. Okay. I'll give you as a homework now. Try proving, try proving, prove B for homework. Okay. So just make a Venn diagram for the left scenario, make a Venn diagram for the right scenario and see, are you getting the same shaded area for both of them? Is it fine? Yes. Yes. Aaron, you can please uh, copy this down.
डन ओके लास्ट बट नॉट द लीस्ट डी मॉर्गन लॉ मॉर्गन लॉ वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट डी मॉर्गन लॉ Okay, so I have already given you De Morgan's law while I was talking about union and intersection. So in De Morgan's law, there are two primary laws and two derived laws. So what are the primary laws? Primary law says that the intersection, sorry, the union of A and B complement is as good as intersection of their complements, and this can be generalized. This can be generalized. So if you have, if you have union of A I's. Okay, I going from one to n, and you are taking the intersection of this whole lot. It is as good as intersections of their complements. I going from one to n, right? So if I want to write this in a lengthy way, I mean this is just a notational way of writing it. So in a lengthy way, if you have to write, you will say a one union a two union a three da 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 da. A one union A two union A three da 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 da. Let's say till A n. If you are taking full complement, okay, it is as good as A one complement intersection A two complement intersection A three complement and so on. Is it fine? So, is it necessary to know the generalized pattern as well? Like, could a Present a question in the general. Why not? They can have a question where you can use this generalized pattern. We'll take one question in some time. Okay. Now, many people ask me, sir, proof for De Morgan's law. Very simple. If you say X belongs to A union, I'll just give you one-sided proof. One-sided proof means I'll give you that A union B complement is a subset of the right side. Vice versa, you already know how to do it by reversing the steps. Okay, so it's pointless to write the same things, I know, in a reverse fashion. So if you say X belongs to A union B, what does it mean? X does not belong to A union B. And remember, when I was giving you the fact that X does not belong to A union B, that means X doesn't belong to A and X doesn't belong to B, which means X belongs to A complement and X belongs to B complement. Which clearly means X belongs to A complement intersection B complement. So what did you do? You started with this, and you stumbled upon this, right? So that clearly implies that A union B whole complement is a subset of A complement intersection B complement. Correct. Similarly, you may prove, which I am not writing as I told you, you may prove this is a subset of this. By writing same steps in reverse fashion, in reverse order. Okay, and hence, and hence, from these two, you can conclude A union B whole complement is equal to A complement intersection B complement. Which part you did not understand, Aryan? This to this, or this to this? See if X doesn't belong to A union B. Sorry, if if X belongs to A union B complement, it means X doesn't belong to A union B. Correct? No. If something belongs to the complement, it will not belong to the actual set. Right? Now, if it doesn't belong to this, and I I showed this in your union. If if doesn't belong to union of A A and B. It cannot belong to A and it cannot belong to B because it has to be outside that, you know, circular part. So that part you understood. Okay. Okay. So this is your first of De Morgan's law. Okay. I hope all of you have noted down the steps. Let's move on to B part. B part De Morgan says opposite. If you do A intersection B whole complement, it is A complement union B complement, and you can generalize this. You can generalize this by saying that the un the intersection of A I's, the intersection of A I's whole complement is same as 
यूनियन ऑफ देयर कॉम्प्लीमेंट्स ओके अगेन प्रूफ इज सेम आई विल नॉट बी डूइंग इट नाउ देर आर टू डिराइव डी मॉर्गन लॉ वट इज द डिराइव डी मॉर्गन लॉ इट से दैट ए माइनस बी यूनियन सी इज ए माइनस बी इंटरसेक्शन ए माइनस सी uh omkar which one you wanted to see here b or a this is b oh you want to see a okay this is your a you want to see the last part or the top part clear okay great let's let's continue yes so this is called a derived de morgan's law okay this is called a derived de morgan's law now how do i derive this result of course it will be using the basic primary de morgan's law for the proof let's prove it let's prove it let's start with the left hand side a minus b union c now remember when we had done the difference of two sets a minus b or let's say let's say x minus y x minus y can be written as x intersection y complement isn't it yes or no do you remember that fact x minus y could be written as because x minus y could be written as x intersection y complement so in the light of this i am treating x to be my a y to be my b oh sorry uh, b, b b union c to be my y okay So now I'm going to apply De Morgan's law here, so I can write it as B complement intersection C complement. Okay. Now use the distribution of intersection over intersection. Correct. So this is by De Morgan's law. Okay, and this is by distribution of intersection over intersection. correct so this is nothing but a minus b and this is nothing but a minus c and hence the result is it fine any questions any concerns so mind you very very important there are some students who basically try to make their own set of rules so the other day some people said sir can't we use distributive law of sub, you know this difference over union no there is no such distributive law don't make your own set of laws beyond the ones which i stated you if you are using any result make sure you have proven it so don't start generating your own mathematical laws okay so a minus b union c is a minus b intersection please note there is a union here and this becomes intersection over here very very important in a similar way and again this is something that you will be proving for homework a minus b intersection c is a minus b union a minus c okay so please prove it for homework same way as what how i did the c part same way as how i did the c part is it fine any question should you move on okay so with this we are going to take up few problems okay one by one we'll take a few problems and then we'll move on to the last part of this chapter which is uh, the cardinal number properties of sets also called as the practical problems on sets but before that at least uh, three two three questions we'll take on this algebra of sets okay shall we okay so here comes our first question
Okay. I'll be starting with a very simpler one. If A and B are two sets, then A intersection, A union, B complement is which of the following? Yes, yes, we should be able to finish the chapter today itself because next class I am planning for relations and functions. Okay, Saket, very good. I hope you have given your response on the poll as well. Very simple question. I'm getting two responses. We'll try Pranav. We'll see. Last one minute. Okay, almost everybody has answered. Okay, now I'm ending the poll. Out of 19 of you, uh, 13 say option C, but six of you say something other than C also. Okay, so six of you uh, is non-C option and uh, 13 of you say C. Okay, great. See, it's a super easy question. It should not deserve more than 10 seconds also. A union B complement, right? If I, if I talk about A union B complement, Roughly speaking, it's everything which is beyond A and B. So let's say this is your A and B, right? So A and B, A union B complement will be everything outside this, correct? So I didn't realize that was complement, the apostrophe. Oh yeah, this is a complement, apostrophe. Yeah, I didn't realize now, that. what is the intersection of a with something outside A. Nothing. There's no intersection. So clearly option number C is right. Okay. So Venn diagram sometimes works miracles when you're solving the question. Sometimes it may not. So use whichever is more convenient at that particular point of time. Now let's say if I want to solve this by using my laws of sets. So I can use, I can use my, I can use my De Morgan's law here. So it's A complement intersection B complement. So if I apply my distributive property of intersection over intersection, what do I realize? This is a null set. L which law? Law of, law of yeah. complementation, right? So intersection of intersection of a null set with any set gives you a null set. Which law? Which law? Boundedness, right? So from here to here, it's boundedness law, right? So from here to here, it's the distributive law of intersection over in intersection. Correct. And from here to here, it is law of complementation. So whenever you're writing these answers in your exam, also make sure you are mentioning which law is being used. Okay. Oh, no problem, Arya. I will take more questions. Not to worry. Is it fine? Should we go on to the next one? All right. Next question. This question, I will write it down. A union B whole complement union A complement intersection B is which of the following? A complement B complement, just A or just B. I'm relaunching the poll. Okay, once you're done, please press on the poll button. If you are not able to see the poll button, don't panic. You can always write your answer on the chat box. I can I can acknowledge it.
Okay, guys and girls, almost three minutes gone. I am now putting the poll to an end. Okay, so anybody who would, okay, so poll is already ended. Most of you have said option number A, but I can see a very mixed response. Uh, seven, three, three, five. Okay, let's discuss this. Now, if you want to solve this by using Venn diagram, then maybe it will become a little lengthy. I have not tried it using Venn diagram, but what I feel is without Venn diagram, it can be solved in a very, very super easy way by using your algebra offsets. How? Let's see. The first expression A union B whole complement. I can write it as A complement intersection B complement. Okay. And let's copy the other terms as it is. Right. Now, if you see this very closely, it is actually the the right side of the distributive law. Okay. So write down the distributive law from right to left. So when you do that, it is as good as you doing this operation. Correct me if I'm wrong. Okay. So you are as if applying distributive law like this. So I'm just using the reverse of the distributive law. This is why it becomes very important to know our law, not only from left to right, but also from right to left. Right? So this is as good as saying a complement intersection. Now, what is this B complement union B universal set? Isn't it law of complementation and intersection of any set with universal set will be the set itself, which is clearly option number A. Is it clear? Any question, any concerns? Okay. Should we move on? Should we move on? Okay. Let's take one last one before we move on to the law, uh, to the cardinal number properties of sets. A union B union C intersection with A intersection B complement intersection C complement whole complement intersection C complement is which of the following option A A intersection C option B B union C complement option C B intersection C complement and option D none of these none of these Okay, so question is clear. A union B union C intersection with complement of A intersection B complement in section C complement. Intersection C complement can be simplified to which of the following? Poll is on. Uh, Aditya, for the previous question, the answer was A complement. Yeah, option A, correct. Take your time, not a hurry.
One more minute. Okay, five, four, three, two, and one. So please vote now because I'm not going to stop the poll. Okay, so most of you have gone with option number C. Other options have got uh, significantly lesser votes as compared to C. Okay, so let's see. So first of all, I'll use a generalized version of De Morgan's law and I would write this term, the term which is in the middle, as A complement, union B complement, complement, union C complement, complement. Okay, can I write that? So many compliments I've never got in a single day. <laughs> oh, you found it easier by Venn diagram. Go for it. All the best, uh, Arthur. Okay, so now, so I can write this as A complement, union B, union C intersection C complement. Now pay attention. I see this term sitting here also. And I see this term sitting here also. So can I now apply, can I now apply reverse of distributive law only on this? So I can write it as B union C union A intersection A complement. Can I say that? And of course we have intersection C complement waiting outside. Can I do this? Can I do this? Do let me know. Anybody who's confused about this, let me know. I can write it in a simpler way. See, let's take this guy separately. I'm writing it in maybe a green color. Yeah. So when you're saying A union, B union, C, intersection a complement union b union c take b union c as x okay so it is like writing a union x intersection intersection a complement union x right or not so it is as we're saying x x union a intersection a complement or not Right? That is what exactly I've done. So this guy is my X. This guy is my X. Where did the double complement go after the first step? My God, double complement means you're back to the same set. No, a complement complement is a only no law of complementation forgot. Clear Omkar. <laughs> you it slipped out of your mind. No issues. Okay. Now this is as good as saying a null set because a intersection a is a null set. Correct. So you are taking, you are taking union of a set with a null set. So doesn't it become this only? So from this operation, I can only get B union C. Is it fine? Make sense? Yes, Pradav. So far, so good. Whatever you want to copy, please do it. Now let us use distributive property. So distributive property, you can write it as, you can also write it this as this way. So if you use distributive property, it becomes C complement intersection B, union C complement intersection C. So this is as good as B intersection C complement, commutative law, and this is anyways a null set again. So union of any set with a null set is the same set, which basically gives you this as your answer, which is proper, which is option number C is correct. Is it fine? Any question, any concern, take your time. I'm pausing right now here. Okay. Whatever is on your screen, 
just have a good look at it tell me if you need assistance anywhere okay all right so there we go law in the third last step right sorry yes yes, yes. so i use distributive law here from here to it this is distributive law and this is your this is your complementation law that's how yes. i got a null set here and union with a null set is going to be the same set that's your identity law yes make sense yeah so guys and girls here we move on to the last part of this chapter which is called the cardinal number properties of sets cardinal number properties of sets please note the name of this topic is the properties applied to cardinal number okay not the sets themselves but applied to the number of elements in the set many people also call it as practical problems on sets okay so basically there are some set of laws which the cardinal number follow and please take care of this please make a note of these laws because you are going to use this law even in your probability chapter so whatever law i am going to write here exactly the same set of laws will now be used or will will later be used in your probability concept under addition theorems of probability okay so let me start with the first property which says number of elements in union of two sets is nothing but number of elements in a plus number of elements in b minus number of elements in their intersection of a and b now how does this work very simple and you can easily you know verify this by using a venn diagram okay so let's say this is a venn diagram situation of a and b now when you want to find out the number of elements in union of a and b you are looking for how many number of elements lie in this zone so i'm just you know showing it with a zigzag okay okay i'm removing it also so this zone let me call k number of elements are lying in this zone okay then how many number of elements lie in this zone i hope you can see the movement of my marker okay in this zone let's say l number of elements lie and how many number of elements lie in their intersection part which is this zone and let's say o number of elements lie here okay so when i'm looking for n a union b i want to actually get the sum of k plus o plus l right now see oh cool it becomes cool no? <laughs> now see if i do n a it gives me k plus o because it will cover the whole part the whole circle so k elements lie in this part that is only in a o elements lie in intersection of a and b so for entire a it will be k plus o similarly if n b if you do it will be l plus o isn't it now if you add them you would realize you will end up getting k plus o plus l plus an extra o also isn't it now k plus o plus l is n a union b correct that's what i wrote over here from one correct and this o is nothing but n a intersection b because o is the number of elements lying in their intersection correct so that means i can easily say n a union b is n a plus n b minus n a intersection b very easily proved by using venn diagram is it fine any questions any concerns now this basic law that you see this can be extended to any number of sets okay even if you have three sets or four sets or let's say n number of sets you can extend this particular property how let's see that a uh, second last step second last step this step uh, aryan so in this step what did i do aryan i replaced this guy with n a union b see here k plus o plus l cool is n a union b and this o i replace with n a intersection b because o is the number of elements in a o is the number of elements in a intersection b right so i took this to the left side and the proof automatically came up clear everyone okay 
Now, how does this property work when you are generalizing it? So if you take three sets, if you take three sets, the result becomes n a plus n b plus n c minus intersection two at a time. plus n of intersection taken three at a time. Now, how does this come? Again, the proof is similar to the proof of the previous one. So I'll now make three sets for you just to show you. Please observe the pattern in these results. That is more important. Okay. Let's say these are my three sets, A, B, C. Okay. And I want to find out, let's say I call it P, Q, R. Okay. And let's say call us K, L, M, and this is O. I hope you are, you are aware of which region I'm calling uh, as containing P element. So P is only in A. Okay. Correct. L is only in A and B. O is in all the three. K is only in A and C like that. Okay. So when you're trying to find out N A union B union C, it is basically K or you can say P plus Q plus R plus K plus L plus M plus O. This is what we want. Okay. Now let us start with N A. N A is P plus L plus K plus O. What is B? What is B? Q plus L plus M plus O. What is C? C is R plus K plus M plus O. Let's add the three. Let's add the three. So when you add the three, you will end up getting something like this. P plus Q plus R. Please pay attention. Very, very important. P plus Q plus R plus K plus L plus M, they occur twice. Isn't it? Yes or no? And O will occur thrice because there's O, O, O. Any question? Anybody so far? Any question? Anybody so far? Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write separately the number of elements in A intersection B. A intersection B will be L plus O. How many elements are there in B intersection C? B intersection C, M plus O. Correct. And how many elements are there in C intersection A? K plus O. Yes or no? Yes or no? Yes or no? And how many elements are there in a intersection, B intersection, C, that is O for, from the diagram. Okay, now see what we are going to do here. Maybe I'll have to copy this result in the next space so, because I don't have much space here. Oh, I can manage here also, not an issue. Done, everybody? Copied things down, copied things down. Okay, now see, what do I need? I need P plus Q plus R plus K plus L plus M plus O, correct? So can I say it is NA plus NB plus NC, okay? Note that in that you have P plus Q plus R plus one set of K plus L plus M, right? So you need to remove one set of K plus L plus M, correct? And at the same time, you need to remove two O also because this has got three O's and I only want one O. Yes or no? So I need to remove two O's from it. Yes or no? Now, can I not write this as NA plus NB plus NC? Now, please note here, if you had added these three, you would have got you would have got something like this. 
you would have actually got L plus M plus K plus 3O, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm writing this term as N A intersection B, N B intersection C, N C intersection A minus 3O, right? So K plus L plus M, I'm writing it in terms of the intersection two at a time. And I already have a minus 2O sitting outside. So in light of this, if I open this particular bracket, everything I open up, what do I realize? I will end up getting something of this sort. You'll have plus 3O minus 2O, which is actually a plus O, isn't it? And what is this plus O? What is this plus O? I've already written O is N intersection, N of A intersection, B intersection, C. So this will become N A, N B, N C minus this, minus this, minus this, and plus O means N A intersection, B intersection, C. Let me shift it to this side because it is blocking my way. Is it fine? But what is more important, my dear, is to see what is happening while writing these formulas. What is the pattern? Why minus 3O? Minus 3O because I only needed K plus L plus M. So this 3O went to the left side. So instead of this term here, Aryan, I took this to the other side and wrote the whole thing. That is why minus 3O. Okay. And when I opened the bracket, that minus 3O became plus 3O Pratik. And that got adjusted with minus 2O to become an O. Is it fine? Krish, what's your question? I didn't get your question, Krish. Okay, so we will generalize it even further. So if you have, let's say, four terms, A union, B union, C union, D, four sets, then what will happen? So in this case, you take sum of one at a time. So you will end up getting something like this. See the pattern, N A, N B, N C, N D. So one at a time, you added them. Sorry, I, I, I wanted to write a D. I wrote a B, my mistake. Okay. Then subtract two at a time. So two at a time means take all the intersections of two possible. So A intersection B, B intersection D, D intersection A, then, then A intersection C. Correct. Then B intersection D. Oh, I think I missed out. This was C, by the way. Yeah. So D intersection C. Yeah, I, I missed out one more. C intersection D. Okay. So one, two, three, four, five, six terms will come as a subtraction. Then add intersection of three at a time. So A intersection, B intersection C. B intersection, C intersection D. C intersection, D intersection A and D intersection, A intersection, B finally, okay? And then again, subtract four at a time. The only option that you'll get is something like this, okay? So this is the generalized version. So look at the pattern. This is how you are going to generalize it even for, even for further steps. So here, what you're doing, you are adding single, single, subtracting double, double, again, adding triple, triple, subtracting quadruple. So one at a time you add, two at a time intersection you subtract, three at a time again you're adding, four at a time you're subtracting. So this continues on and on. Getting the point? So this can go on and on. So this particular principle is given a name in mathematics. This is called, uh, this law is called the principle of inclusion and exclusion. And this is very much used in the field of combinatorics. You would realize that the use of this is used in permutation combination. It is used in probability. 
Is it fine? Any question? Any concerns? So two minutes. Sir. I'll just take it down and let it soak in. Absolutely. Yes. Please. Please. Just for homework, figure out if there were five sets, how would their union look like? So let's say N of A union B union C union D union E. Okay. So for homework, try writing the expression or let me write it like this. Write the expression for expression for N A union B union C union D union E. And just send it across. Done. Copied everyone. Okay, Zayan, no? Zayan? Yes. Yeah, okay, okay. All right, so here we are with the next, uh, the third property. In fact, first, uh, yeah, first only we had generalized, no? so second one. See, now many times, uh, you know, people ask like questions like if there are three sets. Okay, I'm just making a diagram here. Let's say these are three sets A. B and C. Okay. A, B and C. Right. How many elements lie in exactly two of the sets? A, B, C. Okay. Now express your answer or let me write the question in this way. Let's say this expression is X times N of A intersection B y times n of b intersection c z times z times n of c intersection a and let's say w times n of a intersection b intersection c okay where x y z and w they are integers okay find x y z w so instead of giving you the direct law, I'm just giving you as a form of a question. So please note, first of all, which part in the Venn diagram will represent the number of elements lying in exactly two of the sets. So this will be the part which will contain elements lying in exactly two of the sets. So I'm just helping you out shading that area. Okay. So tell me, how do I get the number of elements lying in this white shaded area in terms of N A intersection B, N B intersection C, N C intersection A, and N, N A intersection B intersection C. So Recording the... uh, of this, of the, uh, this thing is already uploaded on the learners platform because we don't share it on the group because it may get circulated. Okay. So any recording that you will be, you want to access will be on the learners platform. So I hope you have all created a profile for yourself on learners. You can access this from there. Okay. Aditya. Yes, I, sorry, somebody was saying something. So X, Y, and Z is 1 and W is minus 3. Okay, so please write down your answer on the chat box because everybody else will get influenced by your answer. Okay, I'll get okay, fine. You can ping me, I'll send you. But I cannot put it on the group.
dan Yeah, there are videos. Yes, there are videos. Okay, let's see this. Okay, now if I talk about this uh, area and let let me name it. Uh, let me name it as P, Q, R, and O. Right. Now, what I exactly need is P plus Q plus R. Right. Right. Now, when I do this, is what I need. This is what is required. Okay. This is the number of elements in exactly, exactly. Two of the sets, A, B, C. No, no, no. You don't have to pay anything for the videos. Uh, those, uh, those uh, price tags are put because I don't don't want anybody else to you know look at them other than our own students. So if you have enrolled with us for that particular bundle, you so the bundle is the JE Mathematics bundle. So in that you will find out all the videos. So further inquiries you can always touch base with Dhiraj sir. He will guide you. Okay. Okay. Now see, the moment you do N A intersection B, you not only get P, but in addition to that, you'll get O as well, right? So this will give you P plus O. Similarly, N B intersection C, what will it give you? B intersection C will give you R plus O. Okay. And if you do C intersection A, it'll give you, it'll give you Q plus O. Correct. Now, the moment you add them all, the moment you add them all, what you realize is you end up getting P plus Q plus R, but in addition to that, you get three O as well. Okay. But I don't need the three O. So I send the three O through the other side. So P plus Q plus R will be nothing but this minus three O. And what is three O? And what is, in fact, what is O? O is the number of elements in the intersection of all these sets, isn't it? So O is nothing but n of A intersection B intersection C. Clear? Right. So clearly means that. Let's say if I put a one here, one here, one here, it clearly means that x is one, y is one, z is one. And W is minus three. Is it fine? Simple. So in the same way, in the same way, I'll give you one more homework question, so that uh, you know we can move ahead with the other laws. Anything that you would like to copy, please do so. Sure, sure. Take your time. Take your time. Yes, yes, payment uh, LMS has been activated. Okay, so I have a homework question. If the number of elements in exactly one of the sets A, B, C is equal to is equal to N A plus N B plus NC plus let's say X times NA intersection B and B intersection C and C intersection A plus Y times NA intersection B intersection C. Okay. Question is Find X and Y. 
question is clear to everybody so question is the number of elements which lie in exactly one of the three sets a b c is given by this expression okay where x is multiplying x is multiplied to the entire set here and y is only multiplied to n a intersection b intersection c you have to find out the value of x and y <laughs> good zayan is trying trying to find the answer now it's it okay it's a homework question it's a homework question right all right so we'll move on to the other properties i think we have already done uh, one two and now third one now see i am not going to give you all the set of properties it it all comes from your venn diagram so if somebody asked you what are the number of elements in a minus b now just imagine the venn diagram of a minus b and tell me what expression could you possibly write for n a minus b so i just make a diagram for everybody to you know recall that a minus b part so let's say this is a and this is b okay so a minus b is this zone so how will you write this how will you write this yeah arthur will discuss it in the next a class section b complex right see no number of elements i am asking you that you are telling the expression in terms of properties of sets i am asking you how many number of elements will be sitting in this shaded area right so you say number of elements in a and from there you subtract the number of elements present in a intersection b isn't it okay similarly if i ask you how many elements will be there in b minus a what will you say number of elements in b minus the number of elements lying in the intersection of a and b yes or no yes or no similarly if i ask you how many a number of elements are there in a delta b what will you say so what did delta mean again sir this delta means union of this part and this part i mean the entire shaded area which is in white and yellow combined so na plus nb minus na intersection minus 2 so na plus nb minus twice of na intersection b isn't it because in both na intersection b comes in nb also na intersection b comes but i don't want na intersection b at all so i have to subtract twice of it yes or no yes or no can i also yes. say it is as good as na union b minus na intersection b that also can be written in fact both are same formula just written in different way is it fine okay so this list so in this one in the second one also want it be twice na intersection b in the second one here like uh, a union b or uh, n into a union b minus twice n a intersection b why oh uh, because a union b only has this intersection part once in it okay yeah yeah okay got it now we'll see how it is applied to solving questions let's say a few questions based on it i'll take a few simpler examples Let's take this one. Okay, I'm putting the poll also for this. Read the question very carefully. The question says, a survey shows that sixty-three percent of the people watch a news channel, whereas seventy-six percent watch another news channel. If X percent of the people watch both the channels, then which option is right?
Okay. Anybody else who wants to answer? Okay, let's look into this. I'm, I'm putting the poll to an end because it's almost three minutes gone. Okay, and I want to do a few more questions before we end today's session. Um, it's a very confused response. Uh, B and D have got most number of votes and C has got the second highest vote. Okay, fine. See, many of you have interpreted this question in a wrong way. And that's the result why you have gone, got different answers. See, there are two channels. A, B, and there could be more channels also. Right? The question setter is not trying to say that A and B are the only two channels. He's saying one channel is watched by 63% of the people. Another channel is watched by 76% of the people and X watch both the channels, right? Now see, this is X. This is 76 minus X, oh sorry, 63 minus X. Okay. And this is 76 minus X, correct. But please realize many of you, what you have done, you have added this three and equated it to 100% while it is less than equal to 100% because you don't have any information about the other channel existing. Got the point. So when you solve this, you end up getting this is less than equal to 100. That means X is greater than or equal to 39. Okay. So X is greater than or equal to 39. Wait. Right? It is not equal to 39 necessarily. So people who went for D, that is not going to be right. Right? So this C still has a chance of get, being right. Now see. Many of you would actually realize this inequality that the number of elements in union of two sets will be, will be lesser than, uh, sorry, will be greater than equal to max of the number of elements in either A or B. Correct. And at the same time, the number of elements in A intersection B will be lesser than min of the elements present in A and B. Getting this point. See, the union of two sets will always contain more elements or you can say greater than equal to number of elements, which is more of the two. So out of N A and N B, whichever is the greater of the two, N A union B will have more elements or greater than equal to number of elements than that. And at the same time, N A intersection B will have an element lesser than equal to the least of the two. This important inequality should be, you know, kept in mind. I didn't tell you purposely because I wanted you to think. So now this X, this X that you see, it is N A intersection B and it has to be minimum of N A and N B. So N A and N B minimum is 63, 76, which is minimum of the two, 63, right? So X should be lesser than 63. So if you combine this first and the second, the result that you will get is X should be between 39 to 63. So option number C, which unfortunately was the least chosen option out of B, C and D is actually the right answer. Understood sir, this. Yes. One more like this. Sir. Yes, yes, we'll take one more question like this.
डन एनी क्वेश्चन है डन ओके लेट्स टेक दिस क्वेश्चन एन ए इज फिफ्टीन एन बी सॉरी एन ए इज टेन एन बी इज फिफ्टीन एन सी इज ट्वेंटी एन ए इंटरसेक्शन बी इज एट एन बी इंटरसेक्शन सी इज नाइन ओके then the possible value or values of n a union b union c is which of the following option a 26 only option b 27 only option c 28 only and option d it could be 26 27 28 either of this so all are this all are possible or let me write all in front of it are possible so all 26 27 28 are possible let's solve this okay let's discuss this okay one answer i have got from sake let's discuss this see if you see the information here whatever information i have at hand i will try to use that information so this is nothing but na which is 10 nb which is 15 nc which is 20 minus na intersection b and b intersection c and a intersection c which is not given to me right plus n a intersection b intersection c okay so this term 
this numbers they will add up to how much uh 328 right now pay attention pay attention this is very important What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this minus sign common and I'm going to write it as N A intersection C minus N A intersection B intersection C. Okay. Now you tell me from your common sense, is this more or this more? Is N A intersection C more or N A intersection B intersection C more? So any more. this is more or this is more all right this is more than this please note this down that the number of elements in this will always be more than the number of elements in this because more intersection means lesser number of elements it will have right so which means n a intersection b minus sorry why did i write b it's c no an a intersection c minus an a intersection b intersection c will be a positive term correct so if i say this term is x then this x is actually positive isn't it what does it mean you are subtracting a positive term from 28 which means an a union b union c will be lesser than equal to 28 let's call this as 1 so from this information, at least I can say that my N A union B union C will be lesser than or equal to 28. Right? Now, I'm still not done. Hold on. Can I say N A intersection B intersection C will be minimum of the three? This or this or this Correct. Sorry, this is this is going to be lesser than lesser than equal to minimum of these three. Because intersection cannot intersection of all of these cannot exceed the least value of these three. Whichever has the least value, it cannot exceed that value. Correct. Now, out of these three, this information is not provided to me. I only know this two information. So it is less than minimum of N A U intersection B. N A intersection B is eight, correct? Oh, sorry, I have to write union. Oh, so sorry, one second, one second. This is union, no? So in case of union, this will be, this will be greater than, and this will be max. Sorry, I I my mistake wrote an intersection there. It is a union, okay? So now, now I can see that I have been provided indirect information to get N A union B. This will also become union. Yeah. So I have information indirectly to find the first two, but not the last one. So I will only work with the first two only. So A union B, how do I find it out? A union B is N A plus n b minus n a intersection b which as per our given information n a is 10 n b is 15 and n a intersection b is 8 so 10 plus 15 minus 8 which is nothing but 17 i believe and what about n b union c n b union c will be n b plus n c minus n b intersection c how much that will be n b is 15 15 plus 20 minus 9 15 plus 20 minus 9 how much is this this is 26 so n a union b union c will be greater than equal to max of the two so 17 and 26 which is max 26 right so as per the data which i have I can only conclude these two things. It is less than 28, but more than 26. In short, N A union B union C is a number which can be a natural number between 26 and 28. So what all possible values can it take? 
26 also it can take, 27 also it can take, 28 also it can take. Correct? So option number D becomes the right answer. Is it clear? Now this question is not easy because many people will not be able to think of all these inequalities. So what is important is not only the not only the theorems, uh, not only the equality theorems, but also the inequality theorems. Is it fine? Any questions? Scroll up means till what position, Pranav? Is this good enough? So, yes, Zian. So when I initially looked at the question, I had a feeling that the information that's been provided is not enough to get the exact value. Right, right. That's I, many I wasn't able to think about all this and find the exact solution, but mm -hmm. I sort of knew that maybe we might not be able to get an exact value, so I picked the last option. So is that a valuable shortcut, or do you think that many times in the competitive exams you could go wrong if you move in that direction? See, if you have not utilized all the information in the question, that means something may be missing in your answer. So many times the information that is in provided, they are just enough for you to crack the problem. And even in that, if you're missing out using something, okay, then it will definitely lead to some kind of an error coming in your result. That is a thumb, that is a thumb rule, which I normally use. So in this particular problem, if you have used just the up, upper part of the data. That means only this part. Okay, less than equal to 28. Then the chances of you making mistake may happen. Here you may be lucky to escape with a D, but not always. Yes. Can you show the question? Just one, I want to write, try solving by myself. Okay, fine, Pranav. Just note this down. Take a snapshot. N A N B N C N A intersection B N B intersection C they are given. We have to find the values of possible values of N A union B union C. Okay. So that's all from my side. Thank you so much for joining in. Bye bye. Take care. Good night. So have your dinner. And do take good care of yourself. Sir, I had one last question. Yes. Sir.